Good day. Anesthesia for the first heart transplant. I'm Barry Metz, and it's a great privilege to give this lecture on the first heart transplant. More so because I trained at the University of Cape Town where this took place, and also learned cardiac anesthesia from Dr. Joseph Ozinski. The first heart transplant took place at Goetheskur Hospital, here pictured in the Lee of Devil's Peak, part of the Table Mountain Range. The surgeon was Dr. Christian Barnard. He came from a poor family on Beaufort West and traveled to uni the University of Cape Town, in Cape Town, of course, to study medicine, upon which he wanted to become a pediatric surgeon. He first trained in pediatric surgery, both in uh, um, South Africa and the United States. And then after a period of practice in South Africa, he returned to the United States to learn cardiac surgery at the University of Minnesota. He re returned with a gift of a cardiopulmonary bypass machine from the NIH to establish the first cardiac surgical program in South Africa. He did this with Dr. Joseph Ozinski, a talented anesthetist at the University of Cape Town, who had a penchant for funny expressions. The first patient to have the heart transplant was Mr. Louis Waskansky, pictured here with one of his favorite cowboy books. He was an ex-boxer ex who had suffered terminal coronary artery disease and now had a failing heart with extreme Stokes Adams breathing at night, which frightened his wife that he had already died as a consequence of his cardiac surgery. It was inoperable using the techniques of the day at hand. One of the last things that the donor, Denise Darvel, must have seen was the peak of Devil's Peak beyond the hospital as she crossed the main street at Salt River just below the Hurtiskew Hospital. She walked across the road to pick up a cake from the local bakery and a vehicle accident occurred. She suffered a terrible um, brain injury while her mother was killed at the site. Ambulances came down the hill and immediately picked her up and transferred her um, at, to the Hurtiskew um, unit, trauma unit, where she was then resuscitated. The surgical registrar on call recognized the fact that she has brain, had brain death and so called Dr. Christian Barnard, saying that he might well have a donor for, Dr., for Mr. Louis Waskansky, who was dying of cardiac failure. On November the 2nd, 1967, in Theatre A, Louis Wisconsin was wheeled into the operating theatre. Dr. Jo Joseph Ozinski administered the anaesthetic with great confidence. He administered atropine 0.6 milligrams IV, and then very, very slowly gave the thiopentone 200 milligrams over the next two minutes. He had propped up Wisconsin before giving the induction because he was so short of breath before um, the advent of anesthesia. He administered succinylcholine and intubated the patient and then put him on the bird ventilation system that you can see in the background of this photograph. By the way, some of these pictures are from the Heart of Cape Museum, which is ho housed now at the Hurtiskew Hospital. Next door in Theatre B, the organ was being harvested. The surgeon was Dr. Marius Barnard, Christian Barnard's brother, and the anesthetist was Dr. Cecil Moss. Because of the, ti the times and the uh, acetation of brain death, Denise Dahlval's ventilator first had to be switched off, and the EKG must show a flat line before they were allowed to open the chest and place the uh, heart on cardiopulmonary bypass to cool it and to preserve it until the operation could be um, successfully concluded. Next door, Barnard was operating on Washkansky. 
They started uh, started cardiopulmonary by- bypass through a femoral cannula the, at half flow and started to cool the patient. But the line pressure rocketed up. The femoral artery pressure rocketed up as a result of the fact that the femoral artery was far too constrained to allow full circulation. Dr. Barnard knew exactly what needed to be done. He needed to cannulate the aorta instead and go on to venocaval aortic bypass. To do so, he told a Johann the perfusionist to continue circulation to cool the patient as he prepared himself for aortic cannulation. He then asked the sister, Sister Jordan, to cross clamp, even though the circulation was still on. She did, and the whole cardiopulmonary bypass circuit disrupted. As you can see here in the yellow slide, there was a long period of time where there was absolutely no circulation during the course of this operation. About four units of blood spurted throughout the operating room. The operating room was bathed with blood. Meantime, Wojcicki's heart was fading away in its cavity. He ordered, um, he ordered the perfusionist to de-air the um, circulation system by recirculating it, and, and uh, uh, Dr. Ozinski more than likely gave some blood and started isoprenaline infusion. Then, Han said, all right, professor, all clear, meaning that their system had been de- declared, and uh, Dr. Ba- Dr. Barmard said, pump on, Johan, pump on. They continued the operation, and at the time that the heart had been fixed into its new cavity, they gave some succinyl choline, and they started DC defibrillation um, at 20 watts. The heart started uh, beating from its fibrillation, and calcium gluconate and isoprenaline infusion was started. But they still had to come off cardiopulmonary bypass. In those days, they did not gradually come off cardiopulmonary bypass. They practiced it many times in dogs. What they would do is they would just switch the pump off and expect the heart to manage. And so too, at 6.06 a.m., Barnard said, bypass pump off. And Ozzy read out the blood pressures, 95, 80, 75, 60, 55. Start bypass again. Increase the isoprenaline. Potassium normal? Yes, said Ozzy. Okay, Johan, bypass pump off. Blood pressure 85, 70, 60. Restart the pump. Christian Barnard was terrified. He'd often seen this in the dog experiments that he'd done with transplantation. The heart just would not pump. It would just give in. It would become hard as a stone, and he would not be able to manage the transplanted dog heart. At 6.30 a.m., things went a little better. Ossie said, the pressure is increasing, 95 on 65. The venous is 6. Johan, increase the venous pressure. Okay, let's stop the pump again. And it worked. That lake of the Tranwerk, he said in his mother tongue, it looks like it will work. And it did. The heart started beating strongly in its new cavity, and the pressure was maintained. They continued strengthening the heart and added some insulin and a a a lignocaine infusion at 0.2 milligrams per minute and completed the anesthetic with nitrous oxide, oxygen, and pethidine or demerol, 25 milligrams IM. And the next day, here's Louis Weskansky looking a great deal better than before the operation. And here is the classic photo of the whole team gathered together in celebration for the successful event. And finally, this is the an, an, a newspaper article that would take the world by storm. And we can see here Barnard and Ozinski standing very close to each other. I want to thank you for your attention to, for this lecture. And I uh, would also refer you to the fact that I have told this story uh, much better and much longer in uh, my book, Waking Up Safer, an Anesthesiologist Record. Thank you for your attention.